Hi, welcome to the Property Show. I'm Jayashree Kurup. I'm editor MBTV, and I have with me Mr. Niranjan Hiranandani. He represents uh, the industry for he leads the industry with, with Asocham. He leads the real estate industry with Naredco, and in his own right, he is a, a mover and shaker of the Indian industry. So, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for the advice. We are talking about NRIs and their behavior in the Indian uh, property market. We're talking about why they're looking at India. Are they actually um, just searching or are they buying? Uh, before we start and uh, get Dr. Hiranandani's uh, views, I thought we, we did a deep dive into Magic Bricks and said, what are the NRIs doing? And I'd like to present those statistics so with your permission. Please. But So the first thing we said is, uh, Deepak, can I go to the beginning, please? Yeah. Which countries are the NRIs coming from? We see that 41% of NRIs are looking at Indian property from the US. The UAE is uh, at 14%, Singapore is 5%, Australia is 5%, Canada is 5%, Qatar is 4 and the other countries are about 26%. Now, let's go to the next slide, please. And this is in the last six months. So which Indian cities are they looking for? Hyderabad, Bangalore, Mumbai, Chennai, Pune, Kolkata, New Delhi, Ahmedabad, Coimbatore, pretty much across the country. And these are the centers that have always had NRI attraction. Go on, Deepak. So the top 10 localities where NRIs were searching, Gachibali in Hyderabad, Kollur in Hyderabad, Kondapur, Hyderabad, Mukila, Hyderabad, Whitefield in Bengaluru, Telapur in Hyderabad, Bima, uh, uh, Birama, Goda, uh, Hyderabad, Manikonda, Hyderabad, Narsingi, Pachupalli. Now here we are looking at the maximum numbers of searches. So it need not reflect the uh, cities. What we did was where, which localities get the maximum number of searches. Go on Deepak. So what budgets do they look for? Now this is a very interesting uh, uh, slide. 80 lakh to about 1.12, uh, 1.25 crore has only about nine uh, plus seven, uh, about 16, 17%. The rest of it is either below 20 lakh to up to, uh, and 20 lakh to about uh, 80 lakh is very strong. And after that, it is 1.25 crore and above is also another 20, 21%, which is high enough. Uh, let's go on deeper. The properties they look for, multi-story apartments is about 39-40%. Residential plots have come up, bounce back in a big way. They are about 21-22%. Residential houses have again made a comeback between houses and villas, 18% and 12%. Go on, Deepak. And why do they, what do they prefer? 71% say they want un, uh, ready to move in. It's not what they're saying in a survey, it's the way they are searching. Ready to move is what 71, 72% are searching for and under construction is the rest of them. Uh, let's go on. And the age groups, you know, surprisingly 18 to 24 year olds also have been looking for uh, looking at Indian property, about 11% of them. 25 to 34% and 35 to 44% are the largest 35 and 30%, 45 to 55, uh, 54 is about 15%. 70% of the people who were looking for uh, NRIs who were looking for property in India were male and 30% were female. Thank you, Deepak. So to put that, that was just to put the conversation in context. Now we'd like to see you as Naredco, you as Asucham, you as Iranandani properties. What is it that you're seeing from the as NRI attraction? Uh, thank you very much, Jayashree. Uh, it's a very interesting aspect of NRIs. NRIs in the last uh, decade or so had been a very important source of investments into India in terms of residential real estate buying. This in between was withdrawn and uh, they were, it had come down, especially uh, post 2008. We did see a downfall of all those and the Lehman crisis and thereabout. I think there was quite a substantial fall in the demand for real estate in India in terms of the NRI buying. However, this now seems to have come back and we are seeing a new surge of interest into India uh, I think mainly uh, we do see that uh, Prime Minister Modi brought about a fresh insight into India. He, he talks about 
Make in India. He talks about housing, housing for all. And he has given a focus to the country in terms of it. And a lot of people, NRIs who are there, are looking at India back with different sort of eye than they did much before. So we do see a renewal part of the interest. Uh, the kind of uh, attention we gave in terms of the real estate people, in terms of NRIs, has been varied depending on the company and the uh, uh, operations that they did. So uh, those who were in the segment had concentrated on NRI sales have been very successful. Some have concentrated and not been successful. So we have got varied results by varied companies and locations that you said. As you showed on the screen just now, uh, there were more outlook in terms of certain locations. And those are the herd type of thought process which do take place, whether it is from a single uh, 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 community or in terms of a uh, language speaking areas, those are the type of responses you do get in terms of NRI. But the biggest point really is a brand name that became important. So either people had got the herd idea of what they heard from other people, but now with so much on the internet available, uh, the seeking of these properties have moved over uh, to the webs and the uh, sites where interest of all these uh, purchasers are looking quite differently or the methodology is quite different. So earlier, a lot of it was word by mouth. A lot of it was by people of references. Today, it still continues to be so. But the people themselves now will go on the net, see the website, see what the offerings are, and therefore make a different sort of, uh, what should I say, uh, a searched, reasonable, thought, thought out by then was what was earlier, where they would go by what the other people would say. I think a lot of people are themselves doing study of it. And this is also indicated by the report of money control, I think is also coming up in a similar fashion than what I'm saying today. So positive flow in terms of NRIs, uh, which is definitely taking place. We have seen other research reports also. And in one of the research reports, we find uh, the reported figure goes as high as 40,000 NRIs are actually interested to buy in India. That doesn't mean they're going to buy today, but they are interested to look at India as a place in order to buy their houses. And uh, Jayashree, there are two different thought processes that we see, again, reflected by your report. One, that they want to buy it for their own use. The second, to look at it as a safety fact investment into India and see whether the appreciation of the property can take place. Uh, and th there are two other reasons also why I think India uh, looks interesting to them. The first being that the, value, the rupee has depreciated as against the other currencies. So whether it's the Middle East currency or the dollar, uh, the rupee has fallen substantially, almost 14% against the dollar uh, in the last two years, uh, three years that have taken place. And that itself is in indicated that they will have to spend less money to buy the same property, while the property prices in India have not increased. In fact, they could have gone down by a couple of percentage points, but they have certainly not increased. And uh, also the fact that the future looks good in terms of India, in terms of uh, opportunities to grow, Prime Minister talks about how uh, India is looking forward to the next generation of development. So I think uh, overall, Indian interest into Indian real estate is definitely growing. So are those announcements uh, directing the searches as well? Are they looking at where there is a potential of uh, future growth? Uh, Jayashree, it's different in different locations and for different corporate entities. So what we would really find is that there are three segmentations in which residential is really going. One is those who are homing for their home places. So a lot of people in Kerala will want to buy a plot in their home village. They would like to buy, take a plot, build their houses, and then have it in their homes, homes there is. 
The second part of it will be those who will try to buy apartments uh, close by to the city centers, very close to their home or otherwise. And the third, which is really now looking like the bulk of people who are going, are looking at cities and urban areas because the opportunities to continue to work either for themselves or for their children, the opportunities in urban areas and metros and uh, cities are certainly drawing much more interest. So you will find more interest in taking place in Hyderabad, in Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore, Chennai, because those are the city centers which draw a lot of other businesses so that even when they come and uh, take a house here for themselves, education for their children, and also the future in terms of opportunity for the children to have a better lifestyle, a better way to live and also the growth. So both these aspects are taken into consideration. Uh, you will see a wide variety of locales and type of properties that NRIs are wanting to buy. So which professions do they come from? What is their oh, uh, Really all over. Uh, there are people who are professionals who have got uh, uh, who have got jobs abroad and ultimately want to come down and retire into a country itself. Uh, they would like to earn the money and live a better quality of life in our country because the uh, standard of living is uh, cheaper in India to have a higher standard of living with less money than if you are in uh, Dubai or in London or America. Obviously, the cost of living is very, very, very high and cost of medicine is even higher. So all these factors actually drive professionals who have completed their jobs uh, to come back to India. Second, a uh, large number of people are not accepted in the other countries as uh, to continue to stay if they don't have jobs. Look at the migration which has taken place in the Middle East. All the workers, all the salaried people, all the people who have small businesses, big businesses, have actually flown back to India. So uh, either they have homes or they are taking homes on rent or ultimately they would like to have the security of buying the houses. So buying the houses is definitely an in thing that is happening for these people. And the other part of it is true, which is that people bought a smaller house than they, what they actually wanted to buy because they never thought they would have to come back to India. So they were very safe and contented and had a house in India as an insurance policy. But today when they have to come, they actually are wanting to invest into a bigger house, a better house, a better quality of house, and are seeking to upgrade either the quality of the house or the size of the high house or both. And uh, if their families are there, they're also looking for houses for their children and other people to do it and also a place for work. So uh, that's also a thing which uh, we do see and our eyes uh, taking place. But uh, from whatever indication we have, about 65% of the people who actually are NRIs are buying a house, are buying for their own use. And about 35% uh, of them would look at an investment return opportunity that they are looking for. So it's a different ballgame completely when you look at NRI sales as distinguished from sales uh, within the country. What are the features that these houses, uh, that they're looking for in the house? Well, uh, first of all, they are used to a better quality of life and better amenities in their in the foreign countries and uh, more cleanliness, more uh, facilities in terms of amenities. They want clubhouses, they want gardens, they want uh, a necessity to have medical facilities, nearby areas. Uh, and all in all, uh, places which would otherwise be a little more expensive but uh, willingness to spend that extra money in order to get the amenities and facilities which they are used to in the foreign countries. So yes, they would be willing to spend a little higher than a local person would do for buying uh, an apartment. Would you, would you as developers uh, build separately for NRI demand and for local demand? Not really. Uh, we don't think that is, uh, that's an appropriate thing. Uh, in all our projects, we have uh, NRIs buying, uh, but uh, they form a, about 5 to 10% of our total sales in any particular project in this. 
Of course, sometimes a group of uh, NRIs would get together and buy 10 apartments together because they want their friends and relatives to be around them uh, in India so that they can look after each other when they are here or have friends next to each other. But uh, that's not the normal thing that happens. So we are not looking at NRI sales in terms of an entire building or otherwise. We have a mixed use in terms of local sales and NRI sales. Sometimes I think only having a building with NRIs is a bit dangerous because how more than three fourths of the apartments would remain empty and that's not very safe. So it's better to have a mixed type of uh, buildings where you have NRI customers as well as Indian local people staying. The age groups, which age groups are uh, dominant among NRIs? Uh, surprisingly, all segments seem to be uh, the interested. Those who are young uh, also want to buy an apartment. Maybe their budgets are not as big. Uh, and the middle-aged people are the maximum buyers. So you find from the 35 to 50 uh, segment actually are the major buyers of uh, real estate. They are looking at a long-term buying that they do. By that time, they have already started earning monies, uh, helping them to set aside some savings in buying an apartment and they would buy either in installments at ready. So we do see both the segments, uh, not necessarily only looking at ready apartments. As long as they are buying from a brand, they're quite comfortable in paying by installments. So uh, we don't see every one of the NRIs wanting ready projects, but uh, recently, yes, it is like that. After many of the uh, uh, builders have failed in the marketplace, a large number of flat uh, purchasers are looking at uh, ready or close to ready apartments and not willing to take the risk of under construction uh, uh, properties that we see. Is that a long-term phenomenon or you think that's a temporary one? Will uh, NRI start investing in launched properties as well? Well, uh, to be honest with you, there are two factors. One, what is the factor in India and what is the factor in the country in which they are working? So there are possibilities that they will actually continue to do more uh, investments in the country in which they are, if they have a long-term interest in staying there. But after the present shakeup, I think it's a current phenomena. And this current phenomena, people don't forget easily. So my reading is that it will continue for a longer period of time. But how long? Only time will tell. So the first round when we had the NRIs coming in when India's economy opened up, the, uh, the mid to uh, late 90s, we saw a lot of uh, differences. I mean, you know, there were new facilities and features that went into housing complexes because a lot of NRIs were also buying, right? And many were uh, taking short-term commissions in India and things like that. Do you see that kind of trend happening? Will the housing market itself transform because of this demand? Uh we are more open economy now than we used to be. Uh, Jayashri, you're right. Uh, at that point of time, the NRIs did influence the quality of buildings, the quality of housing and the amenities that are required. But now, let me assure you, our Indian community is equally demanding. So they want the clubhouses, they want the swimming pools, they want the schools, they want the hospitals, they want the service elements which are there. Uh, and uh, we've already taken as part of our lives and uh, construction that we need to do it. But there is an affordable segment, which is, of course, challenging. And there, they are more price conscious. So at the lowest end of the strata that you talked about, where it could be the workers community, uh, some of them would be more price conscious than amenity conscious. And there is at least a 20% uh, group of people uh, who would look at the price rather than worry about the amenities. And uh, this is across the board. So you, you cannot say that that is a tendency in Kerala or Chennai or Mumbai or Delhi. Uh, it's all over the country. A certain number of people would be very conscious about their investment into a house and would look at uh, the, the lower end of the uh, price in order to buy the property. But I would say that is about 20% of it. The rest of them, 80% would not mind paying a premium for a quality of the product. Even if they are buying a small apartment, they would prefer to have better amenities, better uh, facilities in the common areas and other things and have a house of that kind. 
are we going to see the small town uh, story also playing out here? Tier two, tier one cities. Uh, will this move to tier one and tier two? Yes, uh, it is so in the case of NRI investments. The homing instinct still continues. And those who come from the villages want to go back to the villages. They buy plots. They make their own bungalows. They would like to have schemes of people who have plots and other schemes. Uh, you have small town developers where the NRIs are staying. You've seen complexes in Kochi. You have seen uh, in, the, in uh, Coimbatore and other areas where we do see a large number of NRIs have purchased these complexes. But uh, by and large, I would not uh, say that is true. But, uh, but the exceptions are also true in the sense we do have that kind of buying also continuing to take place. So I would not rule it out at all. But uh, if you're looking at the numbers, uh, the major towns really take the cake. Now, is NRI investment only in residential? Are they buying into commercial? Are they buying into uh, specialized infrastructure and so on? Yes, of course. Uh, the interest in commercial has grown up over a period of years. Of course, the foreign direct investment is more by institutional investors rather than individuals. But individuals are also investing into commercial property in terms of getting returns. So we do see NRIs buying, and that is the 30%, uh, 25, 30% that I talked about, who are looking at investments are also looking at commercial buying. So uh, it is happening, and more and more NRIs, I'm not keeping that category, I'm not talking too much about that category, because there is a huge buying of uh, even uh, foreign pension funds, other funds which are interested in uh, commercial properties. Individuals, I would say 80, 85% of them are looking at residential, maybe 10, 15% are looking at commercial in terms of total value propositions that NRIs as individuals are investing. Corporates, of course, uh, commercial investment is higher and much more structured uh, than you would see in the case of residential property. So what, how has COVID impacted even NRI buying sentiment? I don't mean whether they want to buy or not, but what they're looking at. Um, Jayashree, difficult to give you an analysis so early in the day. The initial definitely is the fact that everybody wants safety. Yeah. They're looking at how can we be more safe in the complexes that we are staying what is the kind of facilities that is available to the person who has bought a house? But that's not only for NRS. It's also for, for residential buyers. So I would say they are very, very similar with one difference being that uh, they are more used to a better quality of service or a higher level of service in their foreign countries as compared to India. So they are more demanding to say that, can you give concierge for services? Can you actually provide all the other facilities which are there within the complexes, including healthcare and others? So all these factors definitely will count and do count just now when the uh, people are buying. And uh, let me assure you that the brand is becoming more and more important. Earlier, I don't think that the, the, the NRIs were as brand conscious about buying. They would just buy wherever they could get an apartment. Today, they are necessarily looking if they can buy a branded product rather than just go to any product anywhere. Because I think there has been a lot of failure by builders and developers all through the country and uh, has scared many of these people whose, whose uh, investments have been burned down. And uh, naturally, they're looking more at branded people in order to assure them that they're okay. Of course, RERA has helped because uh, they have been more and more assured in the case of new investments as compared to the earlier ones. But yes, they look more at branded today than they were ever doing before. Uh, how long does an NRI take, uh, considering that they can't fly in and see the properties, right? And they, they don't know when they're going to come in. There's a lot of technology, uh, use of technology in selecting the homes and also in finalizing the transaction. How does it work? Jashi, this is happening to Indians also. So, but yes, uh, the NRIs are definitely taking options in order to buy the property and sending deposits and others. 
and saying that they will come over and close the transactions. Some of them have told their relatives and friends to actually go and check the properties and some of them are doing that. And third, we are sending them as much as digital information, uh, videos, plans, whatever it is to them in terms of it, to show them the property and the other thing. So the digital media has definitely helped them to close down the choice and even make it. So we have had sales on the web and uh, people have closed the transactions and uh, we do, do know that they do talk to their friends, relatives and other people to come and check on to the properties also as to whatever it is. But fortunately, a lot of information available on blogs, on the net and others have helped them to close the transaction without fear and favor. And uh, how long do they take to close a transaction? Uh, uh, normally, I would say between 30 and 60 days is the time that they close the transaction unless they have decided to fly in themselves, which is, of course, a delay or whatever it is. And they would send some amount of money in order to put it in order to say that, look, we are genuinely interested. And uh, here is the deposit for the purpose of transaction. And we'll come down and sign the agreement. But many of them have uh, actually executed power of attorneys in favor of their relatives and others and even close the transactions and sign them. Uh, so your advice, you lead the industry, your advice to other developers, what are the three, four things that developers should do if you want to uh, capitalize on this NRI demand? I think the first is, of course, uh, uh, trust. You should not belie the trust of the investors. You should actually be a service-oriented company. And the third, you must go and keep up your commitments. Uh, that's the most important thing of all. Uh, developers have not been have been known not to keep their commitments in the past. And uh, I'm I'm seeing a world of change in them. Uh, I'm hopeful that in future that they will continue to improve their services elements to the NRI community. Why NRI? All, every buyer should have the same or similar or better service, but the credibility that you can get in international markets will give you a multiplier benefit uh, in the long run as your credibility is uh, spread all over the country, all over the world in terms of uh, that you have honored your commitments. The final question, if, if uh, 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 NRI buys into your property, thinking that it is a safe haven, do you also need to give him other services like helping him to lease out the property if he's not coming in now and things like that? Do developers step in there? Yes, we do. Uh, as a company, we do help them to rent out the properties. And uh, in fact, we have sold properties which are also pre-leased out. So we have pre-leased out properties which are being sold by us. That also is a possibility of to invest into those properties. And those who have bought from us also, we try and assist them to do a leasing. We have a leasing desk uh, which takes care of that. Uh, we also help them to get loans from banks and financial institutions. So depending on their capability of being able to remit the monies, uh, in low, uh, prop, uh, banks and financial institutions in India also give loans to them. Of course, there is a cap to that, uh, depending on the person and the NRI status and the country. Uh, there are possibilities to get loans for them also in our country. So all this is done by the, our company and uh, we try to look after them as best as we can. And what percentage is bought with borrowed money? What percentage of NRIs borrow money to buy? About 25% of the people do borrow money. Uh, by and large, 75% uh, uh, really don't borrow the money. They are able to pay. Some of them, of course, buying it by installments over a period of time. But most of them, 75% have, have been doing it. About 25% do borrow monies and uh, take the flags. But it, it doesn't matter really. It depends on the capability, their future expectations, their income potential in the future. Uh, depending on all that, they would rather buy it in installments if they don't want to have it ready today. And the way forward as you see it? I think it's uh, India has a great future. Uh, uh, we have a fantastic prime minister and uh, he has a vision and a direction in which he wants to take. He's uh, friendly with all the countries in the world. He's friendly with all the leaders of all the world. So obviously, the, uh, the, I think the future in India is definitely there. 
He's targeting a $5 trillion economy. Looks difficult to happen because of this COVID year. But certainly, I think uh, uh, we will be there. And I'm sure that uh, with all the other support which is now being given uh, through economic measures that we are taking, and hopefully the um, vaccine will come soon. And if uh, a combination of both these things happen, I'm sure that uh, the growth in India will make people interested to invest into India in a much bigger way, because that's the homing instinct uh, that is there. And uh, why not look for India when it is a big opportunity? And uh, so many countries, so many investors are coming to me. I'm talking about uh, commercial investors who come to me. And they have a great opinion about what India is going to be. So why not our own people? Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you.